Today is Thursday, June 16th. What to know about the Fed's aggressive strategy to get inflation under control. Also, what the White House said in its warning to big oil and how the industry is pushing back. Plus, millions of American cars recalled because of a safety issue. One American sports league is cutting the cord, deciding to only show games on streaming. And Squid Game in real life, the reality show coming to Netflix. All that and more stories to know coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The Federal Reserve took its most significant action yet to get inflation under control. As expected, the Fed decided to raise interest rates three quarters of a percentage point, the largest hike since 1994, and more steep hikes are likely coming. Fed officials expect their target interest rate will reach 3.4 percent by the end of the year, the highest level since 2008, and much higher than what they predicted just a few months ago. With that, Fed officials also released their predictions for how they expect the economy to evolve in the next few months. They're expecting slower growth and a higher unemployment rate. Even still, the Fed says the costs are worth it if it means getting inflation under control, which it believes will happen by next year. The officials say now is the right time since overall spending is still high and unemployment is low. So what are all these rate hikes going to cost you? Well, assuming the interest rate really does reach 3.4% later this year as expected, you'll owe an extra $275 in interest each year for every $10,000 in debt you owe. The next rate hike is expected to come next month. The U.S. is sending Ukraine a lot more military assistance to help fight off the Russian invasion. The package is worth a billion dollars, the largest single share of aid the U.S. has given since the war began. Altogether, the U.S. has now committed about $5.6 billion to Ukraine just in the last four months. This latest aid package will include artillery, ammunition, and coastal defense systems. On top of the U.S. commitment, several European nations and Canada added their own contributions yesterday, promising more weapons and military systems. All of this is in response to pleas from Ukrainian leaders, who say up to a thousand of their soldiers are being killed or hurt every day in eastern Ukraine, that they're running out of ammunition, are outgunned by the Russians, and that Russia is making a lot of headway. In response to the new promises, Ukrainian officials thank the U.S. and other allies, but they still called for even more assistance. Lawmakers on the January 6th committee are raising some questions about what one of their colleagues was doing the day before the Capitol riot. They released surveillance video that showed Republican Congressman Barry Loudermilk giving a tour of the Capitol complex. In that video, you can see people taking photos of stairwells, tunnels, and security checkpoints. Well, the committee says at least one of the people on that tour was also seen the next day storming the building and making threats against prominent Democrats. Still, Congressman Loudermilk says he did nothing wrong. The chief of Capitol Police also looked at that video and said nothing he and his officers saw looked suspicious. Still, the committee says it wants to interview the congressman under oath. It's not clear if he'll agree to that interview or not. But when he spoke to reporters yesterday, Loudermilk says he did not actually know anyone on that tour had gone to the Capitol the next day, just that they were constituents who showed no signs of aggression. And he says the committee is only interested in a smear campaign. A lot more information is expected to come out over the next couple of weeks. In fact, the next committee hearing is scheduled for today at 1 p.m. Eastern. Well, some of the largest oil companies in the world just got a threatening letter from President Biden. It basically says increase output or he'll force them to with executive powers. He wants the refining capacity to get back up to what it was before the pandemic started. In the past, though, oil companies have explained that they've closed or downsized refineries for a couple of reasons. Either they were trying to cut back on emissions of greenhouse gases, or their operations were no longer profitable at the height of the pandemic when demand dropped significantly. But Biden says that's not the only problem. He also accused the companies of profiting off surging energy prices and making things worse for everyday Americans. Biden says he wants ideas to address these issues and more in the coming months. The oil and gas industry, though, argues Biden shares the blame for the high prices since his administration decided to pause new oil and gas leases on federal land and canceled the Keystone XL pipeline that would have carried more oil from Canada. While both sides work to come up with solutions, average gas prices in the U.S. are still above $5 a gallon nationwide. 
By the way, you can learn much more about all of this on our next special edition Saturday episode. I'm talking with an analyst from Gas Buddy who breaks it all down for us. Coming up this weekend. All right, we have more of today's news coming up in just a minute. But first, a quick break for our sponsor. There are some amazing doctors out there, but really the only ones that matter are the ones who actually take your insurance. With ZocDoc, you can focus on doctors who are in-network, putting you on the path to see the doctors who are right for you. No more wasting your time hunting down Aunt Shirley's cash-only chiropractor or the dentist your coworker recommended who's out of your network. I've been there. I got a bunch of recommendations from friends for a dentist, but it turns out none of them took our insurance, and I wasted a bunch of my time calling around. Soon, I realized I could just get a full list of local doctors who are in-network for me with ZocDoc. If you're not familiar, ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. In the chaotic world of healthcare, let ZocDoc be your guide to find a quality doctor in a way that is surprisingly pain-free. Go to ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc. Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash newsworthy, ZocDoc dot com slash newsworthy. The White House is hoping to strengthen protections for the LGBTQ community. President Biden signed an executive order that directs government agencies to get to work. For example, it tells the Health and Human Services Department to release new policies for states about how to expand health care for LGBTQ children and families. And it tells the Education Department to release a sample school policy that promotes inclusion. The president says these kinds of protections are needed in part because of new laws that have been passed in Republican-led states around the country. The state lawmakers and governors who back such laws usually say they're about protecting religious freedoms or parental rights. And some say they're protecting children from medical experiments. But the White House calls them discriminatory. Separately, this order will create guidance to clarify that federally funded programs cannot offer conversion therapy. Well, there's another setback for parents who rely on baby formula. Remember how that big formula plant just reopened a couple of weeks ago after being closed for more than three months? Well, last night, that same facility got flooded in storms that swept through Michigan. And once again, Abbott paused baby formula production at the plant, meaning Elecare and other specialty formulas are not being made right now. The company says that pause means distribution will be delayed for another few weeks while the damage is assessed and the building is cleaned and sanitized. This is a big deal since that factory produces one-fifth of the baby formula in the U.S. And when it got shut down, that's when the formula shortage got especially bad. Abbott says it already informed the FDA about this flooding. It will conduct tests to make sure the plant is safe before it starts production back up again. Ford owners, listen up. About 3 million Ford vehicles are now recalled, including a variety of sedans, SUVs, and vans. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says the issue stems from a shift bushing. That's a component in a car that basically allows you to change gears. So there's a chance you could try to put it in park, for example, but the vehicle won't actually be in park and could roll away. Based on government documents, Ford says it knows of at least six reports of property damage and four injuries because of this issue, plus more than 1,600 warranty claims. Ford owners should go to their local dealership to get the fix. For the first time in the history of sports, fans will be able to watch every single game of a major American sports league in one place and without a cable subscription. That's because Major League Soccer signed an exclusive deal with Apple. It means every MLS match will be available through the Apple TV app for the next 10 years starting next year. Though there will be an extra fee on top of the Apple TV Plus subscription. And even though Major League Soccer is not as popular as some other sports leagues in the U.S., it is a sign that more leagues are moving to streaming. Already, Apple has an agreement for Friday night Major League Baseball that started this season, and Amazon gets the NFL's Thursday night football package starting in the upcoming season. One of the top golf tournaments in the world tees off today with some of the sport's biggest stars. We're talking about the U.S. Open. And yes, it will even include the players who were banned from other big events for joining a Saudi Arabia-backed tour called Live Golf. It's because the U.S. Open is put on by the U.S. Golf Association, not the PGA Tour, which was the one that decided on the suspensions for the other events. So Dustin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau, Phil Mickelson, and others who signed on with Live Golf will be there. Overall, though, Rory McIlroy is the favorite after winning another big tournament last weekend. You can watch all the action on NBC, USA Network, and Peacock. 
Were you one of the millions of people who streamed the South Korean thriller series Squid Game on Netflix last year? The show about a life or death game to win a massive cash prize was Netflix's biggest hit yet. And now Netflix is making Squid Game a reality. Well, at least a reality TV show. It's called Squid Game The Challenge, and it'll offer the largest cash prize in reality TV show history. The winner will take home more than four and a half million dollars. And with Netflix recruiting 456 English speaking players to compete, it'll also become the largest reality TV cast in history. They'll apparently take part in a series of games inspired by the show. Netflix hasn't actually said what happens to the losers, but I think we can assume there won't be any murder involved. If you want to get in on the action, you can apply by going to squidgamecasting.com. Oh, and if you prefer the original fictional version of Squid Game, you'll be happy to know Netflix has officially given the green light for a season two. No release date for either show has been revealed just yet. Well, that's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Thing to Know Thursday. But first, thanks to our sponsor, Indeed. There are multiple ways to tell a news story, but when it comes to finding great talent for your business, there's one way that's going to help you do it faster. You need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. You can find great talent faster through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed is a powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. In fact, Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest. So while the right candidate is doing everything they can do to find you, you can be sure you're doing everything you can to find them too by using Indeed. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash newsworthy. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash newsworthy. Indeed.com slash newsworthy. Terms and conditions apply. Pay per qualified applicant not available for all users. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Okay, now back to Thing to Know Thursday. And today's thing to know is that the DACA program turned 10 years old this week. DACA stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. It protects about 800,000 undocumented immigrants who came to the U.S. as children, allowing them to live in the U.S. legally, work here, and pay taxes. Those young immigrants are known as dreamers. They have to reapply to the program every two years and get vetted every time, though the program is being challenged in court. So for now, younger dreamers are unable to sign up for the program, since it only covers people who arrived in the U.S. before 2007. Many advocates are urging Congress to expand the program. They say dreamers are American, since most of them have grown up here in the U.S., and that they could be good assets to the economy, especially during a worker shortage. But critics are fighting this program. Some feel it only encourages more illegal immigration. Others say former President Obama had no right to even start it 10 years ago, since he didn't go through Congress. So for now, the future of DACA 10 years later is uncertain. All right, thank you so much for tuning in today. We will be back with much more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.